Hello and welcome to the second video in the Brain Dart build. Now in the first video I've already talked about what we're doing here and this is about putting some Brain FPV technology running iNav into my trusty ZOHD Dart. Now the Dart's a fantastic model in its own right but now we are going to give it a much smarter brain. The stabilizer that it comes with by default is very capable but I really like to have my on-screen displays and with all the RD pilots and other iNav things that I've done in the past this is crying out for it. Now Brain FPV have released the Brain Dart kit where you get all the things that I'm using here. Um, they've sent me the stuff that I didn't have because I already had their Radix Li flight controller, the Brain FPV power distribution board that I need and also the wing itself. So I'll go through all the parts and in this video the plan is to get to the end have the flight controller flashed all ready to go and then it's just a case of in the next video we can actually start plugging things together and soldering up wires now the first job that we need to do is to actually strip all the electronics that's already in my ZOHD Dart. Now this is how it's been flying for the last couple of years and uh, it has literally 100 odd hours of flight time on it and it's been fantastic. Now I end up using a big X8R receiver here. Uh, that was just because unfortunately the S-Bus didn't work very well on the stabilizer and uh, then I've got a really nice camera in the front and got a video transmitter. So let me start unplugging stuff. Now the camera in here has been very nice, but we're gonna replace that part of the build with a run cam uh, hybrid. Now this is the Foxeer Monster, uh, one of my other favorite cameras around. So the other thing I'm gonna to need to take out is going to be the VTX, but I'll do that in a minute. Looking inside, we need to take out the stabilizer. Now the stabilizer is just held in place with a very thick but very sticky double-sided foam pad. So just work your way gently at it and it should pop off. Uh, be careful, you don't want to snap any of the balsa wood sheet and we're gonna need that to mount the flight controller on. Once we've got that free, we can undo all of the pins and there's the little stabilizer that's now going to be redundant. Now that gives us access to everything else. So we have the two leads that go into the servos in each of the wings. And then underneath this little bay, we have the little ESC. Now, we're not gonna ask this ESC to supply the power for the new FPV, uh, brain FPV stuff, so we don't have to worry about it. Now a little tip, a little trick I'll show you. I'm gonna grab one of my silver or gold pens here. I'm just gonna mark up all the leads so that when we put this back together, I absolutely plug it in the right way round so that we don't get to the commissioning and find that the prop is spinning the wrong way. So now I've done that, I'll unplug it. So that's the chassis pretty much empty. Let me just get the rest of that pad out, make sure it's nice and clean because this is exactly where the Brain FPV kit is going to go. And as we'll see in a minute, I might have to put it slightly to one side just because unfortunately there isn't a vertical USB port. So that is the middle of it all stripped. Now all the stuff that we're talking about in here is covered in the Brain FPV manual, both for the Radix and the Wing Power Distribution Board, and it shows beautifully how everything goes together. However, I do want to just test fit and see how everything is going to go inside, with this being the first time I've done it. Now again, I'm running the Radix Li, uh, which is the small 20mm uh, mounting version, and I'm also going to use the Wing Power Distribution Board. Now it comes with a couple of sets of pins, both vertical and right angle, and I'm definitely going to use the right angle pins on here so that the connections are kind of the same as already is there. Now the cool thing is with that little ribbon cable, it is gonna connect straight into the flight controller with a minimum of fuss. There may be an extra wire or two that we'll have to put on. But I'll end up having to do a little bit of soldering just to put those pins into place. That big capacitor will put on the input side as well because that is going to be handy just to smooth out the voltage to help everything work really nicely. Now, if we look at where that's going to sit inside the model, um, again, that could sit quite nicely in the middle. Uh, the battery is going to fit where the strap is. So that is uh, has absolutely loads of room much more room in here because the compact size of this little flight controller and wing power distribution board then you'd expect if we're using one of the larger Matek uh, flight controllers 
Now the next thing we need to have a look at then of course is the flight controller. Flight controller does have anti-vibration mounts, we'll have to pop those in the corner. But the flight controller is absolutely teeny and that's going to sit on top, uh, making this a very, very compact install, which is why I could squeeze all this into the inside of a Bixler, which wasn't designed anywhere near as well for this. Now that USB port is potentially going to cause me a problem. If I have a right angled connector that might work okay or I might end up cutting a little hole in the side of the chassis just to get the uh, cable in, the USB cable in. Now the last part of the build that I'm going to have to figure out where it's going to go, and again all covered in the manual but I'm just testing everything here. I always recommend you do this if it's a new build to be clear about how everything's going to go before you start clipping wires. This actually fits in this recess above where the wings plug in um, and it actually goes back a really long way. Now you're gonna have to push it back enough so that this tongue here for the lid can still get in there but with a couple of blobs of hot glue that's gonna stay in place beautifully. So I think that's a pretty good idea of where everything's going to go and I can see how it's all gonna fit and it's all gonna fit great. Now with the Brain Dart kit, you get a number of 3D printed parts. The first one is this one here. Uh, this is how they've come. This has got double-sided foam tape on the bottom already, ready to go. This is what is going to hold the wing power distribution board and then the actual flight controller on top. So that is all ready to go. So we'll end up mounting everything onto there ultimately. I'm not going to do it all straight away because we are going to have to um, solder cables on both boards before we're finished. This next little bit is actually to put the backboard for the Runcam hybrid on. And that is going to fit kind of there-ish. Apologies for the camera being a bit silly with the... Uh, focusing on this bit and then we've got this board here which is to mount the VTX on and that's to give it a maximum airflow so that both sides of the VTX are going to be cooled if you want to run higher powers. So with all three of those pieces we have everything we need to put it together. However I will deviate here from the manual because in my opinion the first job to do is actually to flash the flight controller with iNav before soldering anything on. Now to flash iNav what you need to do is to go and download the latest hex file from the Brain FPV website. I'll put links in the description below. It's also listed in all the manuals as well. Just go there and get the latest one. Now I might reflash this before we finish the build because it looks like there's a new version about to be released. But for now this will allow me to flash it, make sure the flight controller is happy. Uh, although to be fair Brain FPV are really good at testing these things before they ship them out. So it's a very unlikely you're going to get a dud but this is force of habit. Now to flash the flight controller once you've got it, you need to go into the firmware flasher but don't pick any of the boards even if it has a Radix one in there. What you need to do is to come down to the bottom and then select the hex file that you've carefully downloaded from the Brain FPV website. If when you go to flash it, it says that it won't work, then you can use something like Zadig. Uh, see my video on Zadig that explains how all this works, that will put a USB driver for the DFU mode, which is like a STM32 bootloader mode, which the board needs to be in, in order to be flashed. Now, when you click flash firmware, it actually goes into that mode, but if the driver isn't there, then iNav will not be able to see it. Once Zadix done its goodness, then unplug the board, plug it back in, and then click flash, and it should flash up beautifully. So nothing unusual there, apart from the fact that you download the special version of iNav that includes all the graphical on-screen display goodness directly from the Brain FPV website. So now we've done that, let's actually connect to it and do some very basic configuration, make sure it's all okay. I find some of this configuration is easier to do when it is outside of the aircraft and then it's less work for us when we plug everything together. So here we are in iNav, I can move all of the uh, pieces around and we can see it moving that's really good let me just hide the log and then we can see that everything looks really happy and all we're going to do is to set it up is kind of work from the top all the way down here uh, to get it all set up ready to fly 
first job is going to be calibration. So we're going to need to make sure that we have lots of room. I'm going to click on calibrate accelerometer and then we're going to place the flight controller in each position and hit the calibrate button again. So first of all, we're going to put it on its back, hit calibrate. It, there it is. Then it knows what level feels like. And then what we're going to do is put the flight controller in each position and then we're going to click calibrate accelerometer until we have all six of them done. The hardest one is going to be the side that has the USB cable in. So you're just going to have to eyeball that. It doesn't have to be spot on 90 degrees, but as close as you can, uh, it's going to calibrate up perfectly. And again, it's easier to do this in here now. And then when we get it inside the plane, we can just finalize everything. So once we do the last one, there we are, the calibration is finished. We'll click save and reboot. And now it's back, we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, next job then is to go into the mixer. And what we'll do is we'll select the kind of type. We're gonna have an airplane, a flying wing is perfect. We're gonna click load and apply. Now it's gonna have to reboot that. And then when we come back in, it'll show you exactly where each of the servos is gonna to have to plug in. One of the other things that Brain FPV do here, which is really nice, is that they make it so that oh, there's only one motor output and that gives you more room for more servos, which is great. So we can see that servo three is gonna click into S2. Then we're going to presets, 600 millimeter flying wing. Yeah, that'll be kind of close enough. We'll select that and say go, and that will get us uh, close enough. We'll do an auto trim and auto tune and all that goodness when we get this thing all together and flying. And then we've probably done enough to carry on. Now there are ports that will need to be set up for things like the GPS and other things too. And we'll also probably go and set up things like the receiver and fail safe and everything else. But for now, that is working and we're ready to install it into the model. So join me in the next video where what we'll do is we will start putting things inside the ZOHD Dart. We're going to have to install the camera at the front. We're going to have to install the video transmitter and put some extension leads on that. And then we're going to have to start soldering up the everything else onto the power distribution board for things like the ESC and the power connection. And then we're going to have to solder all of the pins onto the flight controller itself. Now this one I'm going to be using a crossfire system on here. So one of the things I need to figure out is whether or not there's enough UARTs to make sure that we can use something like CRSF rather than use something like SBUS. And that will give us telemetry back to the radio. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.